Hi guys, so for today's video, we're gonna do another one of those videos where I just try a bunch of cool new products and just different stuff I've gotten recently but haven't really had the chance to use. And I really want an excuse too, so this video is it. I have a big pile here, so basically I'm just gonna grab things one by one and we can test it out. And then of course at the end, I will do a full set of nails with whatever I got here today. So these first couple things that I'm gonna be showing you are from Shop Crystal. Hopefully I'm saying it right, but that is one of the shops I get my Jello Jello peel off base coat from. And as a thank you for linking it and stuff, they sent me some really cool new goodies. And there's a couple things in here that I am dying to try because they're items I've been wanting to try for a really long time, but they're either like always out of stock. They're kind of hard to find since they are Korean products. And then not from this shop, but I ordered similar stuff to this from another shop and the order got canceled. First off, we have Embo Powder, which is pretty much powder that you mix with gel and it makes it thicker. And I've seen a lot of people use these to create like little 3D looking elements on the nails. And so I'm so excited to try this out. This is the first thing, let's mess with it. So this brand is Bonnie B, which I don't think I've ever tried before. All right, and here's just what it looks like. Just looks like regular powder. And also they did send me instructions for all of these items so that I have very clear instructions on how to use them. I have some other gels here that I wanna use. These are by the brand Bevla and these are 13 free. So these are HEMA free gels as well as free of like other things like formaldehyde and other things. I've tried a couple of these, but I want to use these today with all this other stuff I'm going to try because these are also Korean gels and these are a like syrupy consistency. So I feel like they'll be perfect. These are the shades I got. I have another box and then got a sparkle and a white. So got lots of different colors. I think I'm going to keep out like a rainbow array of colors. And then I know this is out of character, but for my test nails today, not for my full set, I'm just going to use some extra short ones because I really just want to like try this stuff out and it doesn't need to be a long nail to do that. So I think for the base, I'm going to use this really light pastel pink. And here you can see the consistency of this. Again, these are more like syrupy ones, so they're not meant to be super opaque, but they do still have like some decent coverage without looking super flat. Looks good. I'm going to cure it. All right, back to the Embo powder. I think I'm gonna try to make like a cute little frog on this nail. So I'm gonna grab this green here and I'm gonna just put a little bit in. I don't quite know how much I'll need, but I feel like that should be enough. I'm not quite sure on the ratio of the powder. So I'm just gonna grab like this tiny little bit. I feel like, okay, that didn't really do that much. Let's try a bit more. Okay, that definitely made it thicker. It sounds gritty. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna just try a tiny bit more. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good. It's not like running anymore. It's kind of just like staying level. Let's try to actually work with this now. So I'm gonna grab just like someone there. And then like I said, I wanna make a frog. It is staying like kind of up like that. Oh, that might've been a little bit too high up. I feel like that looks pretty good. I'm gonna cure that. Gotta do it quick. I am using this syrupy gel, which is a little bit more transparent than like a full coverage opaque gel. So I do not know if this would work with say like a really pigmented black gel. I'd honestly be a little worried about it not curing, but I guess we'll just have to see cause I did, you know, like form a little bit of a bubble on that. So I'll have to just see if it feels cured or not. I think it is trying to push down and there's no movement or anything like that. Okay, this gel does have quite a bit of a tacky layer though, so you do gotta wipe it. Well, that's the base for my frog. Let's add the eyes. Oh no. Okay, gotta retry that. We'll do one dot at a time. It is still too runny for trying to do two at a time. Then if you wanna clean it up without it spreading, gotta turn it upside down. All right, now let's do the other one. Okay, so here's my little frog so far. Honestly, I feel like it's really cute. I do like that powder and I feel like it was really easy to work with. Obviously practice makes perfect, but I feel like it's gonna be really useful and it was really easy to make this 3D effect with this, opposed to just trying to like glob on gel when I'm trying to like make a little bit of a dome, just adding a little bit of this and it just thickening up like that will be really nice. So I'm not gonna leave my little frog friend faceless, mouthless. I'm gonna do some quick little details on them. And I wanna try this 
greedy cake gel from Mythmelo. This is also another Hema free product. So these are drawing liner detail gels. And I love the packaging on this. Obviously I've been looking into more like Hema free and more like 13 free gels and just all of that stuff lately, which I will at some point have a video on, but I want to have products that I recommend for that video opposed to testing out products. So I want to be able to like recommend which Hema free stuff I think is best or worth your money or whatever. So I've just been trying things out and trying things out now before I do that. Anyway, here are the gels. So they look very shiny and you get a lot of gel. We have the black and white, but then also a dark brown that's more on the red side and then a more like lighter sandy brown. So I'm gonna just dip into this a little bit. Ooh, it feels really soft. Almost like you dumped out a gel into a pot, but it's not like it's soft enough to where it moves or anything like that, like it stays, but it just feels really soft. Let's get some eyes on this guy. Cute. Now I'm going to just dip into the black. Seems to be like the same little texture. Oh, look at how cute he is. Now I'm gonna just try for like a teeny tiny little smile. Ooh, that black gel is very smooth. Not quite. <laughs> Then I'm just gonna grab this like bright pink gel and I'm gonna just give him a little bit of blush. I think it'll be cute. I love this little frog and it was really easy to make. So I love that. I'm gonna just put a quick little top coat over. I think I'm gonna do a little shiny one. And here's my little frog friend. I love it and I love this powder. It's gonna come in so useful. I love how easy it was to create that. I feel like it definitely was easier than a just like thick gel in general. And I bet you I could have even made it even thicker if I wanted like even more projection, but that was so fun. I'm probably gonna use that on my set today because that was just so cute. Maybe I'll do a bunch of like little animals or something like that. I don't know, but I love that. Now the next thing we're going to experiment with is something that I have been looking for forever and I have not been able to find exactly like what it is and honestly, this product is the reason I just like wanted to make this video because I just kind of wanted an excuse to just like experiment with it and mess around and once you guys see it you'll know. So this looks just like regular chrome powder, right? No, it is magnetic powder so you can make any gel into a cat's eye. So I am so excited. I've been looking and looking and looking and if you know what the pieces are called that I can buy, please let me know. But I've been looking what the pigment is called or what material the magnetic pieces inside the cat's eye gels have been because i've been wanting to make my own and or be able to add them in or whatever and i have not been able to find it and then once i opened it and i saw this died and it was so nice of them to include like what ratio worked for them this is another bonnie b product and since this is just magnetic powder i just want to like oh <gasps> Oh my gosh. I'm just having the time of my life right now. No lie, I'm ordering a bunch more of this before I post this video. I could do this all day. All right, well, I've already made a mistake because this is a magnetic holder. So I need to take this nail off and just put it on a stick. That way the magnet in that holder does not mess with it. So I'm not sure what color I wanna make into the cat's eye. This is so hard. Okay, um, I think I wanna do this blue. So I'm just going to start with just a regular coat of it on here. Or, you know, or we could change it up. You know what? I really wanna see the pieces move. So I think I'm actually going to mix the cat eye pieces into this yellow and I feel like it'll look good on the darker base and maybe it'll make like a green or something. I don't know. I'm gonna also have to use this today. I don't know how I'm going to incorporate everything, but I'm gonna do my best. This isn't even the end of the cool powder yet. I still have like one or two more things to open. So I'm gonna get this in yellow. Try not too much, just here we go. Let's open this on up now. It looks just like chrome, but it's of course not. Resisting the urge to just put the magnet on right now. I won't do it because I don't want to waste it. Of course. Oh, all right. You know what? I didn't even think about that. So they said a ratio of one to 1.5. So I feel like this actually would probably be a good ratio for that. It might be too much, might be too little, but we'll just have to see. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's beautiful. That definitely was way too much. 
Do you guys see how beautiful that is? So pretty. Okay, let's get back to it. I'm just gonna grab this gel and we'll put this on. Definitely does not look yellow anymore. I think I used way too much, but that's okay. Or you know what, maybe I did it. Maybe once we move the particles, we'll see some yellow come out. Who knows? Grab my magnet. Are we ready? Oopsie. You know what? I think I'm dumb. All right, I switched to a plastic stick holder. So let's try this again. See if it's any different. Ooh, we can see it. Look, I have another magnet. I wanna see. Mm -mm, this magnet's not very strong. Oh, look it, we did it, did it. Remember I got this little like drawing one. Kinda works. I have this like really strong magnet from, I think it was like a wrap kit. I wanna see what it does. I know you guys can't really see. Oh. <gasps> Ooh, fun, it's like a star. I'm gonna cure it. <laughs> How fun, I love that. I am so excited to be able to make my own. I'm gonna try it again without that base underneath, just to see. I feel like there's definitely that yellow tint, but that color wasn't like a super strong, bright color anyway. Okay. It is so pretty. Wonder if you guys can see better if I put like a flash on. So sparkly, absolutely love it. Okay, so that's obviously very fun. I'll have to try to work that into my set today, but we need to move on. <laughs> okay, next we have sweater powder. So this one, they said mix with any gel to thicken and add a grainy texture for like tweed, sweater, or oil painting type texture. I think to try this one out today, I'm gonna grab ghost robe because I feel like this is a very fall texture, sort of like a dark purple mauve type color. So I'm gonna just, of course, a nice, you know, smooth texture without the powder. So let's get a little bit of that in there. Is that an ant right there? Is that a baby ant? It is, I think. Oh my gosh. What is with this room? You know what's wrong with this room? It used to be a garage. That's probably the problem. And here's what that texture looks like. Kind of just looks like a regular acrylic or sort of like white sand. So both this and the dough embo powder thicken up the gel but this one is supposed to leave the texture the other one watching it is a little weird because it kind of seems like the powder like melts into the gel and this one i think it's just supposed to just like be there so we'll add that much at first mm, definitely thickened it but i don't know if there's that much texture so we'll add a little bit more okay at this point it's like barely leveling out so i think that's where i'm gonna stop okay Let's see if the texture on this. Oh, it does have that like grainy texture. I feel like I don't really know what to say about this one because it is textured. It definitely does what it says. I've never been a huge fan of textured nails. I like the smooth finish on them. I've never really been a big fan of like raw glitter on top or sort of embossing it with acrylic. Sometimes just Never a huge fan of it. I like how it looks, just not like the feeling. I think this powder is much better for mixing for like details and stuff like that, not for like a whole nail, unless you're trying to do like the oil paint type look texture. But then I feel like you might need a lot of the powder. I'm not sure. You hear that sound? It does feel a little rough. I don't know. I'm sure I will use this at some point especially come winter, but just right now I don't really have any ideas for it. So I'm gonna move on to our next thing, which I was just saying, this is the Bonnie B sugar powder, which, you know, you just like sprinkle on top and it's like a white sparkly texture for on the nail. I don't think I've opened this orange yet. I'm gonna put one layer on as normal and then on the second layer, we'll do the sugar. Let's open the sugar powder. Ooh, it's very pretty. I wanna touch it, but I'm not gonna but I want to. Okay, and we'll do our second coat and this one's gonna just be super thin. Actually, I should do this into a non-wipe top coat. I have already been using this, but they also sent this Amuse Gleaming Top Coat and what they had to say about it was a hard top gel that self-levels is non-heating, non-bubbling, super glossy, water-like, superior shine. I have noticed it is very, very thin. So I'm gonna just put a thin layer of this on. Then I'm just going to do this on top.
that's what it looks like. It looks really pretty actually and it looks just like sugar. I feel like this does look a little bit different than regular glitter. This definitely has like a little bit of a different sparkle to it. This is very, very fine powder glitter. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh wow. And it all stuck pretty good. Only a little bit came off. Okay. Let's see how the texture is though. Okay. Yep. Just as I suspected. You know what? It is textured but it is more like you put like acrylic on top. It's not as crazy feeling as a bunch of glitter. It definitely is still rough, but it is really pretty. So I might be able to excuse that on a couple small little details. I feel like it is also exceptionally glittery. I like it. Next up is N. Ryan Nuance Gel. And they said it's really good with chrome powder and like an embossed texture. So it looks very thick. They did also send over the chromes that go with it. So these are chrome palettes and this one is the fall one, which looks like it has like a blue and some browns, golds, black and white. And then this one has like all the classic chrome colors, like the silver, the gold, then like a uh, different types of gold and some red. So I think I wanna use this blue in here. I'm gonna use this blue. It's like a bit darker than the other blue. And here's that palette up close. Very pretty. I want to do that chrome on top of the gel, but I don't want it to get on my base layer. So I'm gonna go in with a matte top coat. And let's open this on up. Okay, so we'll just get, oh, whoa. Oh my gosh. For some reason, I thought that was gonna be like the solid gel that's like almost like a clay, but this is gel gel, but just not runny whatsoever. I was not expecting that. I'm a little bit at a loss for what like brush to use with it. It seems like you could pick it up like this. Maybe I will. I don't know, whoa. That was such a different texture than I was expecting. And I'm making sure to wipe my matte top coat. That way nothing sticks to it. I'm not quite sure what I want to like draw on this. Oh wow, it's a lot smoother too than I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be a lot clumpier, but you can get like really thin with that. I figured I wanted to try like a little bit more of an intricate design with this and just see. So I'm gonna cure it now and we'll see how that powder does on top. Okay, I'm gonna take the blue. I like the blue on blue idea. All right, can we do our... <gasps> Oh my goodness. Whoa, look how good that looks. The chrome is so much easier to apply on this gel because it does have some projection opposed to like you just did this with a regular top coat and did some chrome. The chrome did stick to that so well. I am very impressed. And then I'm just going to go over everything with a top coat, my designated top coat that I have for chrome powders so cool looking i love that okay so that is pretty much it for all of my stuff from shop crystal if i forgot to mention the palette and the bevla gels were not from there those were from sweetie nail supply and zilla Bu, i think next up are the tips themselves that i'm going to be using today and i'm dying to show them to you guys i haven't opened them yet but i'm really excited we have full cover duck nails look at that and with a little bit of a curve even and they are decently long and i don't feel like they're too flared to where it's gonna like really knock into things that's always my issues whenever i have had duck nails the very few times is that they're so wide that they always catch on everything but these are not like that wide they're like flared ducks they're not like extremely flared so these are the tips that i'm going to be using today so we have so much that we can put on these nails and especially duck nails you know are very 90s or early 2000s and they always had crazy designs and stuff so we have a lot of stuff to be able to do that you know also sent over these tiny sanding bits look at how small they are with this little mandrel bit i feel like this is going to come in so handy especially for like the inside of full cover tips and stuff like that. Cause for small nails, I'm always using like a cuticle bit or something to etch the inside. So after all of that, let's finally do the actual nails. Okay, so I think I decided what I wanna do. So let's just start out by putting the tips on. I've never had to size out duck tips before, so I'm not quite sure my sizes or if they're my normal ones. These tips are fairly flat. There's not like a big C curve or anything like that. So this will work well for flatter nail beds. Looks good. I will definitely need to file these around the cuticles because they are very square. 
And then I'm gonna also go ahead and file off this little notch here. And I'm gonna also make the tip just a little bit sharper because there's a little bit of like a curve here and I just want it a little bit flatter and sharper. Whenever I see duck tips, I really like when they have like a sharper triangle look at the end. To put on the nails, I'm gonna use this new Apre Extend Gel. This is their like solid gel, essentially it's very thick. I've used it once before. And for this, I'm gonna just scoop some up like so. And it is not wanting to stick to the tip. It keeps moving. So I'm gonna put some primer on this tip. All right, will that help? Oh, it did help. Perfect. Now let's apply it and I will cure this. With this stuff, you don't have to like hold it down. It stays very well, so you can move it around as much as you want before you cure it. It's very nice not to have to like hold the tip down while you cure it. So you can really make sure everything is straight. What do we think? It's definitely different. Also, look at this little bruise. I accidentally smushed my finger in a baby gate today. <laughs> Here we are. I feel like it's not as hard to move my hand as I thought I was going to be. I thought I was going to knock the tips together a lot more than I am. So it's actually not too bad movement wise, which is the main thing I was worried about with these. So exciting. They're kind of cute, aren't they? Let's clean the edges up and stuff like that. And then we can get on to finally decorating them. Today, we're going to do a Halloween set. The first one on this channel of the year. Okay, so now we are ready to do some designs on this. So what I wanna do is a cute pastel Halloween set. So more like cute than spooky. And I loved how that frog came out. So I'm going to model the nails kind of after that where we have a base color and then just a main cute little 3D design. I wanna use this little periwinkle color for my base, at least for this nail. I don't know if I'm gonna have every nail have a different base color or not. We'll just have to see. I wanna get this one done and then I can go from there. I love that color and I am going to do a second coat. For the first little design I'm going to do, I'm going to use this one because we're going to do a pumpkin. Get that in there. That's probably enough. I feel like the colors on the bottles and what actually comes out is definitely not accurate. I was expecting a nice light orange pastel and this is definitely a muted dark orange. That does not look similar at all. And I'm going to use my Embo powder. Okay, let's see. I would like it quite thick. I think that'll be good. Will that be enough? I actually do not think so anymore. You know what, maybe. I just don't wanna make too much. I don't wanna waste that powder. I do feel like this was the perfect amount of the powder though because it is not spreading out or anything and it's still movable. Looks good. I might wanna build it up a little bit more but I just wanna cure this for now. You know what, I forgot I had a little silicone spatula tool. This will probably be helpful. That's so cute. I think I'm gonna try to make the details the same color, but just with the different heights of the gel. Like, isn't that so cute? Oh, I love that. I'm so happy with that. We need to make the stem. So I'm gonna use this one. We'll see what color it actually is because I'm losing hope that it's actually the color it shows on the bottle. Uh, oh, that's more accurate. Still a bit darker and more muted, but better. I have another design that I'm going to do that uses the green, so I'm just going to make a good amount of it. Now for the stem. And I want to try to do a cute little vine off or something. Mm. I don't know about the vine. I feel like it's too thick. It just doesn't look right. So we will just remove that. I'm gonna leave that like that for now. I don't know if I'm gonna go back and do little details. I may, I may wanna keep it simple. I kinda wanna see all of the little 3D designs together and then I can decide if I wanna go back and add things or just 
keep it like it is. So let's move on. I do think that I am going to keep everything the same base color. I'm not usually cohesive like that, but I feel like the duck nail shape already adds a lot of personality to the nails. So since I'm going to do all of the nails the same base, I'm gonna just do them all right now. And I'll do two coats on each. For my next design, I'm gonna do a ghost. So I'm gonna use this one by Mythmello. Here is the number on that. And this is a white with like teeny tiny little sparkles. You can almost barely see them. Powder once again. This powder is kind of interesting how it looks because it almost acts a little bit like water and cornstarch if you've ever messed with that. If I smush it, you can see the texture, but then it like smooths out. Not that you can see texture with cornstarch, but it'll like hold its shape for a moment and then just like bleh. All right, let's do a little ghosty. Okay, there's not much more I can really do to that without adding details, so we're gonna definitely go back and add a little details on these. But for the next nail, I wanna do some sort of like dripping slime. We'll start here. Perfect. All right, I love that too. I'm gonna use this one, again, from Mythmillo for the bat I'm gonna do on the next nail. This is an interesting color. It's kind of gray, but it has almost like a purple reflect shimmer in it. That does not look right. <laughs> The bat is just not going right today. <laughs> And now I'm gonna go back and do the little details on this just right on top of this, so 3D. And then for the last one, I'm gonna do a candy corn. So I have some white and some orange. So now I need to make some yellow. We'll start at the bottom layer and that's the yellow. I don't even like candy corn, but it's very cute and very Halloween. Okay, these are all pretty simple, but I think they are adorable. Very unscary Halloween nails. I kind of want to stick to this like lighter color palette. So I'm just gonna use what I have in here to do details. So for like that gray, I'm gonna use it for the ghost eyes. And then I'm gonna just take a little bit of this pink to do some blush on the ghost. Definitely has some big eyes. And then for the orange, I'm gonna use this one for a little bit of detail. Maybe just like in between. I felt like adding a little moon here would be so cute and I love it. And then I wanna see if I can make a shine mark on this. Okay, I know that they're really simple, but I kind of just want to keep them like this. I think they're so cute, just like with all the little tiny things. I know I don't usually go simple on my sets, but I just really like this little style. So I'm just going to top coat it now. Next time I do some duck nails, I'll probably go way farther with the design and do maybe like a Y2K design with some glitter and, you know, charms and everything, of course. But for this particular set and the stuff I wanted to use, I don't know, I just wanted to do this little pastel theme. This top coat is really good for these 3D designs because it's very thin. So if you don't put too much on, you're not gonna lose the edges of things. Like I need to take a little bit off here, but like on the bottom of my ghost, for example. Wait, I'm already wearing a ring. I wonder if I'll be able to get it off. I didn't really think that through. And here we are. I love them, especially this little ghost. It's so cute and the pumpkin. Thank you guys for watching. I hope it's okay that this set is kind of simple. I hope you guys like it. I actually have a whole bunch more new stuff that's come in the time that I'm filming this. So if you want me to do another video similar to this, make sure to give this video a like. And thank you again so much for watching and I will hopefully see you next time, bye. All right, it's the next day and I feel like with the duck shape, you just have to add more. So I'm coming back to add some glitter and 
other accents because I feel like they just don't feel right. I think the design is super cute on like the smaller nails, but I just needed to fill in more of this space. I'm sure a ton of you are gonna agree. So I just went ahead and did some glitter on all the designs and I figured I would do this pumpkin one with you guys. And for all this extra little accents, I just used Secret Nail Affairs ice gel polish collection and the glitter glass gel collection. I feel like these were both perfect for it and also the Nails by Dev So Icy liner gel. And I feel like they look so much better now.